is was supposed to pop up and say that we're on. All right, there it is. We're live. I like doing this. <laughs> we're live, everybody. <laughs> Every time. This is everyone. Um, Chris and Heather Lenz is on with us today. Our special guest, always, as always, I got my co-host, Jay Azubuki. Um, we're excited to talk with a husband and wife team once again and uh, kind of feel out how they do their business and they, they're doing some awesome things. They're in actually Catoosa, Oklahoma. Uh, I met them at a house, an open house that they had in the na neighborhood Michelle and I live in, in Bixby, but it's basically kind of all Tulsa County. But, uh, but yeah, Chris and Heather, welcome. We're excited to have you. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited to be yes. on. Yes, yes. And we're gonna just jump right into it. So. First question for you is, tell us a little bit about how you got into the business. Obviously, we want to talk a little bit about the whole husband or wife uh, dynamic of what you guys are doing together as a team. But tell us a little bit how you got into the business and what kind of drove you to, to make that decision. And how long have you been doing it? Yeah. OK, so I'll start because I technically yeah. was the she, first She one. brought me into the business, so she might okay. start. Yeah. Okay. He's, a, he's a recruit. Yeah. I recruited him. <laughs> um, so I started, I was actually 18 years old in Florida. I'm from Oklahoma, but I had moved to Florida. And I was like, you know, I'm working at some restaurants, but maybe I would like to be in real estate. So I took my test um, multiple times. Yeah, we won't uh, say how many times you took your test. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, thankfully, you know, we don't use a ton of books on that in real life business, but that's another story. Um, but I ended up getting my license at 19. Um, right. so gosh, I've, I've had my license for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was doing real estate in Florida where the average age is, you know, around 50 to 60 years old. So here I am 19 trying to um, help, you know, a different type of clientele buy homes, most of them second homes. Um, this was back in 2008 and 2009 during um, Interesting the wonderful time. recession. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. A, it was perfect time. timing. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I, I saw a different type of real estate there. We did a ton of foreclosures, um, short sales. And so, um, you know, totally different type of real estate. Um, we decided, we got married, decided to move back. He started to think about getting his license back in 2010, 11. Mm -hmm. Um, and we kind of just held off on it, moved to Oklahoma, had a little one. Um, I took off to stay at home with her and then jumped back into the business here in Tulsa back in 2017. So, um, have been here in the Tulsa, um, market since then. And, you know, I had to learn all over again because I was used to 2008 Florida market and Tulsa market was totally different. You know, it wasn't foreclosures where they were sold as is and kind of I don't want to say easy, but not a whole lot going on. It was totally different working in more residential. And so um, we've been here for that long. Chris was actually an inspector yeah. um, when we moved here. So I'll let you kind of tell him why you jumped in. Yeah. So I. Um became a home inspector. Um, I thought it would be an awesome niche where she's a realtor, I'm a home inspector, kind of all in the same realm of the business and everything. Um, really enjoyed it. You know, I started a, a nice little company, was pretty busy and everything. Um, I actually brought her brother-in-law in to kind of join me with it. And then once I did that and I started seeing more on the real estate side, mm -hmm. I started kind of like inching over. I'm like, I, I don't know, like this being a realtor just kind of sounds uh, more of what I want to do. You know, I, I love knowing about the home and all that stuff, but, um, and honestly, they make more money anyway. So <laughs> I, I'm like, no, I'm going to go. And, and her, her family, everyone was very encouraging. They said, you know, just our conversations we have, like you could be a realtor. You're, you're talking realtor lingo and you know, you're able to engage and stuff. And so I transitioned, uh, I guess basically, oh, this is my third year. So 2019 or 19? Um, Beginning of 2019 is when I got my license, um, and then just from there, Heather and I have just been trying to grow and just you know continue to hit milestones and goals, and just the next year beating those and stuff. So um, we we love working together as a team. We bounce ideas off, and I'll tell you that whenever she has an inspection oh, or yeah. comes to like the TRR time frame, she always comes to me and is like, Chris, how do I word this? And how would you do this? And only because you know my aspect and my view of it's completely different. So um, it works really well. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Nice. I got to yeah, say, I love it your... for a while on and off different times. Yeah. Nice. I got to say, I love your office. 
because thank uh, you it's kind of dirty right now it's, it's, it's kind of not we're have, we're in transition because we were speaking earlier to Zoe that we have a lot of agents that are coming on board and we're buying okay. a room we got their office space two years ago and we're growing out of it so we actually have people moving in and out to different stations heather and i have been in this station basically since the beginning we kind of have this like corner of the office and that's i don't ours. i don't want to move yeah we, <laughs> so, we, okay. we've got a, a cushy spot here but we have other newer agents that come in and they want to uh, maybe learn and stuff like that so they kind of come to us a lot of questions so sometimes it's easier just to have them in the office with us sure. and kind of mentor and, and train them as well yeah yeah, that's cool. I was talking about just the design, the black doors, the black ceilings, oh, yeah. stuff like that. My wife like loves that stuff. All our doors are black. So I'm going to screenshot your office and show her. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, can you, guys, <laughs> you can. Yeah. Can you guys backtrack to, uh, to 2008 for a second? I'm just curious. People talk about yeah. uh, what 2008 was like, um, but they kind of just kind of uh, uh, breeze over it and not really get into the weeds on it. I'm really curious. What was the market really like at that time? Did um, like did all the investors kind of come out of nowhere and get really excited and start buying things up, or did it all dry up? There was like nothing to do, or it yeah, was, what was it like? It was scary. Number one, it was scary. Um, yeah. So, um, Erin Catron, who's our broker, she was in uh, Florida at that time, and she joined a company, uh, Michael Saunders and Company, and it was one of the biggest in in Florida. And it was crazy because, you know, here we are all getting our license and doing this and all of these major brokerages are shutting down. And, you know, we were just like, oh, my gosh, you know, what are we doing? And so um, people weren't buying at that time. And investors, because we kind of started earlier on before all the foreclosures hit, you didn't really see investors either. We also had issues with um, Chinese drywall because we had a hurricane that came in and all of these condos and houses had Chinese drywall in them. So you have a recession, you have Chinese drywall that's causing rust on all the pipes. And so half of these properties are being um, condemned and vacant. And so um, it was scary of like, why did we do this? Um, We, you know, I I have to give credit um, our broker and they're just really, really smart and innovative. And so they decided, hey, we know what's happening. You know, the, the foreclosures are happening, the short sales are happening let's start dating a bunch of banks and see if we can get involved with when these do hit the market that we could possibly be their agent to list all these foreclosures and so um we we talked to a bank down in florida and um, we were like hey we want to be your person and they're like we already have a person and we're like no but we want to be your person and she (laughs) she was just adamant hey I, i appreciate it but you know we've got people and so um i mean i remember we we asked like you know what do you do for a li- like what do you do for fun do you have animals do you have this i mean we knew her dog's birthday so we were sending um you know gifts and treats and what do you like i mean we and we just constantly stayed in touch with this one um lady this one contact and something ended up happening and i and i don't remember because it was so long ago but something ended up happening with the contact the agent that she worked with and Perfect. she was like hey she's no longer with us you guys have been you know courting me for you know six months now do you want this and so we literally had a water hose full of listings that were hitting us faster than we could even um, deal with it now as cool as that sounds the really bad part was that a lot of these properties um, had people in them and a lot of these properties you know we had to do a lot of that management of um hey you know the bank is saying you need to get out and so that that was really hard you dealt with some really sad situations that you just you go oh you know this isn't fun um but on the other side as far as you know the the business side went we were able to grab those and um, i mean it catapulted the business because yeah. then we started knowing more people and meeting new uh you know vendors and and partners and so it really took off and all you know other places were shutting down and we were building you know a bigger office um, well, to try and house new agents and you it, did it find cool. buyers at that point then like investors we or did. so it wasn't really a, le- a lot of investors at the beginning it was okay. a lot of people from up north um who were going hey we've always wanted a vacation home this, this sounds yeah. like a good one i mean we were selling condos on golf course communities for like thirty thousand dollars um okay. these you know the these yeah. chinese drywall or foreclosures and short sales and so at first it was mainly people just trying yeah. to, and then, and then as it went on a little bit further, I feel like the investors were like, okay, the recession 
it's, it's bottom kind of, we're not, yeah. yeah. And then we started seeing more investing. But I would say while I was there, I dealt more with just your true traditional mm -hmm. buyer. Did those initial buyers um, know that they were getting like a crazy good deal or they were just buying like? I don't believe, I don't think any of us in that day, like, no one really thought, holy cow, this is going to be worth $200,000 more, yeah, you know, yeah. five, 10 that's years. That's crazy. A condo on a golf know. course for 30 grand. Like that's, that's insane. I mean, you we hear had, about we had actually looked at it. And if we were in a better spot, like we wish we were, we are oh. now in Florida because we'd be gobbling up all kinds of stuff. You know, we just <laughs> didn't have that liquid income. Right. right there. I was 19 yeah. years old. We were thinking about buying a <laughs> house at 19, right? But yeah. just sell more. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I, yeah. Thanks and I for that. credit for all this because it wasn't, when I say we were doing this, it wasn't us. It yeah. was our broker and we were just okay. small pieces of it. So I can't take credit for that. Um, Aaron and Dirk have, were just, they were geniuses and we just got to be a part of it. Did they know what actually happened in the like world, like in New York, like the financial markets, like the meltdown? Or did they just see that stuff was cheap all of a sudden? And a lot of foreclosures. You know, so Dirk, he he is definitely more involved when it comes to market and overall market and what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and he's he has built many businesses, not just real estate. And so I think right. he definitely was more in tune to what was happening. See the overall picture. He could he could see the overall picture better. Um, so I, I think so. I mean, I would say he wasn't super knowledgeable on it, but he could see it and go, okay, hey, here's an opportunity. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. That's I mean, great. you know, you look at these, the values of a house. I take rents. My mom lived in Florida. She had a house that the, at the peak of right before the recession hit, she goes sold her house for $325,000. Well, recession, you know, comes through. She has to get out of her house and she barely got $150,000. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, even if people were in that market and they knew what the value was a year ago, and it's like, I can buy yeah. it for $120,000. They just see it as a good value. Mike, surely it'll go up from here. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. So cool uh, to hear y'all's experience through that. So uh, I guess piggyback question off of that, because it sounds like you guys were familiar with a certain way of kind of marketing and taking advantage of that situation. I'm curious how your marketing, especially organic activity, how you generate your leads. How is that transition from season to season? I mean, especially for you, how you've been in this business for this long, you know, since the crash or whatever. But what is it that you guys are doing now that is generating business for you? And how has that changed over time as you've experienced different seasons in this industry? Yeah, so I think we kind of have an advantage um, because we did, we were, I was in a time where you had to just straight out hustle. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it's not like people were just begging to buy. There was some uncertainty with the market. So I feel like I was kind of pushed up against a, up against a wall to a certain extent. And so it being so young and all of that, you know, I, I went and printed a bunch of free foreclosure yep. signs. I had these signs printed that said free foreclosure list. And I put those on every street corner and it had my number on it. And I would get them and I half of them I didn't sell a foreclosure to. I would just get them as a, as a person and then try and match them up with a home. And so I would say, number one, moving you know to today's world and market where we're at, um, we're just not afraid to try things mm -hmm. and see if they work and yeah. sometimes a lot of our thoughts have not worked um but we're not afraid to just try and see and we're not afraid to work we uh, it's sometimes i think we probably we should slow down a little bit but it's something that we we enjoy the other thing is being innovative I, you know i think a lot of people you know go okay i'm going to call my sphere and i think that's a perfect place to start um, but we go, okay, well, we can call our sphere, but what else can we do besides just trying to get people that we know? Mm -hmm. um, when we moved here to back to Oklahoma, I'm not from this area. And he's, he was, he's from Massachusetts. Yeah, I'm so not from the Midwest. <laughs> he's not from this area. So, you know, when we came to Tulsa, it was like, hey, you know, get your sphere and call them. And, and I'm like, but I don't have anybody in Tulsa. Like, I, I don't know anyone here. And so that was a little bit daunting, but thankfully, because we have been in way worse situations, it was like, okay, what can we do? If if calling, you know, people who live in Arkansas and Massachusetts isn't going to help generate business right now, what can we do? And I would say that as far as lead generating, which I know we might go into some other stuff later, but social media has been one of the biggest lead generators for us. Um, 
and more of social proof. We're not doing yeah, any, we're not doing, um, I would love to learn. And I, if anybody, you know, who watches this later is really great at ads, Facebook ads, I would love to learn from you. That's not what we're good at. Um, we have are, are very open on our social media platforms. And so we talk about our clients, we talk about homes, we show, you know, open houses. And so um, we we get a lot of people who at the beginning were like, oh my gosh, you're doing a ton of business. And honestly, we really weren't doing a ton of business. Mm -hmm. We were doing an average amount of business, but we were letting people in um, to see what we were doing. And so they thought of us as that person who they should go to um, when it came to, to purchasing. So social media has been a huge avenue um, in, in generating leads, if you will, that we didn't necessarily pay for. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even know we were doing it. We were just like, hey, let's see if people want to, you know, watch this content and let's yeah. see if they like it. And it's really paid off um, in the long run. It's awesome. I would say too that, you know, now that we've kind of started with the people coming in saying, wow, you're really successful. I've got a sister that's moving here. would love for you to help. We go from that one client mm -hmm. and we make sure we're very adamant about really good follow up to make sure that after they close, we're, we're more important about them sending us more referrals down the road. And we're, we're noticing that we're going, we're just getting more and more referrals every single month. And it's like, hey, you just sold my best friend a house. They're looking to buy a house. And we're making sure that, first off, customer service is the biggest thing. Okay. You know, making sure that they're having a great experience. We know there's issues with lending, there's issues with uh, title inspections. But if we can get happen. through those and they can just feel like, wow, they've, they had our backs this entire time. I feel confident letting my brothers and sisters and best friends know. And we're starting, we're finally starting to build that sphere. We didn't have it. Yeah. We're, we're now to the point where we know we're going to get multiple leads coming in from past clients. Uh, what are some of the specific things you guys do for those past clients after you close to, to make sure uh, you're intentional yeah. about staying in front of them and getting those leads from them? Well, those one thing that I will, and, and she'll go into a lot more of that. We are really big on like campaigns on a sense that like we have content that we are sending out to our clients on specific time frames. You, you just have to be organized to do it. And she's the one that does it. I don't, she sets up my campaigns cause I, that's just not written me to do that, but she sure. is. So yeah. We'll have so, those campaigns go out. So we were really bad at this and we actually met with a lender that, um, not what, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, how much business are you getting from your, your, um, clients and we were like we're not getting hardly any like we're closing them and then we're moving on to the next person that's coming in and and he was actually the one who really sparked it in me that we needed to update or just put in some type of system any system was better than no system and so um what we do is when we close a client um we're going to reach out to them a minimum of six times within that first year and so the first one is just hey can you believe it's been 30 days like it's been 30 days since you bought your home how's everything going have you made any updates you know, did you paint anything? Did you, you know, tell, show us what it looks yeah. like? And just trying to be interested in what that home looks like. Um, we tell them, hey, it's time to change your air filters. Like that sounds like such a stupid thing, yeah. um, but it's a way for it's me to contact yeah. them and to be a resource. Hey, have you, you know, it's been six months. They tell you to change your batteries on your smoke detector. Um, we do a big event for our clients in November. We do a pie day um, and our clients absolutely love high day they i mean yeah. it's a it's a big party we have um last year we had a drive-through and an in-person event because of covid so we had both people could come or they could drive through and get it we have a picture um thing set up drinks food you know just a lot of fun it's a party it, it yeah. is it's definitely a party we do birthday. that's Aaron. Aaron's the party person so she, she loves pie day because yeah. she gets to have a party and i mean i think you know i think last year we ended up having you know over 200 clients yeah. you know come wow. to the door to get their pie yeah which yeah. is crazy um and who then we the also um, what who makes the pie sam's club <laughs> sam's or costco yeah i thought you'd say Costco's that got a good one. we do not make them no. um we <laughs> buy them and that's it um no. but we also do birthday cards so as soon as our mm -hmm. clients close or even during we're sending them out a google form that says hey we love celebrating you um, tell us some important dates, you know, kids, dogs, cats, spouses, you know, whatever it is, tell us your important dates. And then we have a CRM that we input that in. So, you know, for the month of August, August 1st, I pull up all of the dates that are important and we do handwritten cards to all of those people during that month. And then we do obviously handwritten cards for anniversaries too. So wow. we are just 
constantly trying to stay in mm -hmm. front of them because those are the easiest people. We've already sold them. They yeah. already know that we're good. Yeah. So those are the easiest people to go back and, you know, whether they buy or they're just referring other mm -hmm. people. Um, we, I wish we would have started this sooner. We just started this system um, this year. Yeah. Oh, and wow. it has paid mm -hmm. off a ton already. That's awesome. Are you going to... Um... Do you guys ask for referrals specifically or directly, or do you guys just wow their socks off with everything else you just said? She has referrals. I wow their socks off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing we always like, it's a kind of a thing that we put in a lot of our emails and our campaigns and text messages that go out are, you know, just like when you buy something off of Amazon, you look at the reviews to see if it's something you really like. And so, right. We kind of hope that our clients will kind of think of our business in that way and go, you know, if you know somebody, be a raving fan. We want you to be a raving fan of ours. Um, and reviews are important too, just, you know, on different platforms, Zillow, like Google, um, Facebook. It's a lot harder these days to get yeah. reviews um, for some reason, just because they get blocked out so easily. But um, we do ask. So in that first, in the first campaign that goes out to them, um, we specifically say, hey, we hope that you've had a great experience with us. Um, if you have anybody who's looking, we would it would be an honor for us to have the opportunity to help them through this process. So I would say in that campaign, we probably asked two to three times. Um, we try to keep it a little bit more um, genuine yeah. and um, intentional versus, hey, it's been three months. Do you have anybody who wants to buy? You know? That's good. Yeah, you know, I love that you guys have, you said a few things there, Heather, that really sparked, you know, um, I started writing stuff down because you're like, you're just dropping all these great nuggets. Um, but one of the things that I, I love about what you said is the innovative part, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the kind of the idea that, hey, this is what stands us out amongst the rest of the pack. You know, uh, the fact that you're intentional about the follow up and you actually have different things. I mean, who who gets an email reminding them to change their filter? Like, I wish I would've got that from somebody, like, because I always forget that about a house. Like, you're supposed to be doing these I things do. right up it. And, but that stands you out. Like, who else is doing that, right? And yeah. I love that. Um, transition question here. I wanna talk about, you know, like Chris and Heather, Heather and Chris, like this dynamic of you guys being husband and wife and you're working together, You've got other things, obviously, that you're doing as a married couple as far as work-life balance. Talk to us a little bit about how that works. Like, I know there's a lot of other couples out there that are maybe considering working with each other. Some couples can't do that because they'll literally get tired of each other. Do you guys ever have those kind of challenges? Like, talk to us a little bit about the, just the dynamic of being married and working the same business. So, of course, there are days that I'm just like, okay, Chris, stop. <laughs> not funny anymore. You're not funny. Go take care of your clients and leave me alone. Chris, and I know Chris is going to jokes that he laughs at. Yeah. <laughs> I'm full of jokes. I'm never, they're never old. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we have been working together our entire marriage. So yeah. we started at bartenders, you know, mm -hmm. bartending on the same nights together. And so um, we, oh. I don't, there's only been like a, gosh, what was it like? Five year period. A five year period where we weren't working together. So it, I would say for us, it comes very natural. We, we have really good um, personalities that mesh. Now, does that mean that every day is perfect? No, because we, I mean, it's just like any coworker, you get annoyed at people. Um, but it's, you know, we have found a way and, and we, we have a couple of um, husband and wife teams on our team. And it's funny because I feel like we're the old people that we like kind of coach them like, hey, you know, this is something you should do in order to help your spouse, you know, buy in. Because if you don't, even if you don't work together, and, and I know that you probably feel this too. In this industry, it takes a lot from you. And so you're working constantly, all hours of the day. And so, you know, we, we were telling one of our agents the other day, we were like, hey, listen, I know that, you know, your spouse is like, hey, you are working all the time. You're showing after, you know, five o'clock and your open house is on Sundays. And I told him, I was like, the best thing you can do is say, hey, let's go have dinner on Friday night. It's going to be a crazy week. I've got, you know, five cl clients that I'm showing and I've got all this stuff. But on Friday night, we're going to take two hours out and we're going to go have dinner and it's just going to be us and we're going to turn our phones off. You know, for us, that gives us something to look forward to, which yeah. sounds so small. It's dinner, you know, but in this industry, you don't have a lot of times for that. And so, you know, we always tell people set small little things that you get to look forward to. So on Monday, when that big bomb crashes, 
and you're like, a deal's busting or inspections went horrible, you still have something to look forward to mm -hmm. um, that's kind of outside of it. So yeah. we, we do that a lot. Um, it's, it's like kind of like time blocking. In it a sense, is. But it's, it's one of those things where I might be busier certain mm -hmm. times than Heather is. And so she recognizes that, hey, I've got 12 under contract. She's only got four under contract. She knows that she can do a little bit more at home with mm -hmm. our little one or house maintenance. And then it flip flops. There are no, we don't have like set roles. No. Our roles change all the time. So like you're yeah. exactly right. Sometimes he's Mr. Mom and he's yeah. taking care of our daughter. And sometimes, you know, he's doing, he's cooking or he's cleaning. And then the next week it's me. And so, it's one of those things where we just, whatever role is needed in that yeah. moment and whatever person has that time, that's the role we take. We, we definitely do not have that. Well, you take care of this and I take care of this. We, mm -hmm. and, and that's a little just, bit chaos sometimes because every day it's like, Hey, who's picking up Maddie? Yeah. You know, who's picking, well, I've got to show it too. Well, I have this. And so, um, we probably fly by the seat of our pants a little bit more than we should. Um, but it works for us sure. and we, yeah we just take on a role and yep. that's the role for that hour. And it might change the next day. Yeah, I think as a realtor, you have to have that person. Like you have to be able to fly by the seat of your pants. You can't, you can't be too rigid in terms of structure because everything's yeah. so crazy in terms of just how often things change. Um, I actually want to backtrack because I was, I was really enjoying the whole lead generation, the campaigns, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I had a question about what happens after that first year. So you said in the first year, you're doing yeah. all kinds of stuff, right? Awesome stuff yeah. that I took a lot of notes on. After that, does that continue? Does it kind of die off? What do you do? Uh, do yeah, after so that? number one, I'll tell you, we started this in February. So we haven't even gotten yeah. past the first year yet okay. on all of these. Um, one thing I didn't mention is the people who we, you know, that we're closing now, we've set these campaigns up. But what about all of our past clients that, mm -hmm. you know, we closed two to three years ago? And they're not on campaigns, so we set them up on campaigns as well. It's a much, it's not as an as a not aggressive. I don't want to say aggressive, but it's not as many touches. Intensive. Yes, exactly. So the plan is on the after the first year is complete, we will still continue to do the birthdays and the anniversary. anniversaries, important dates. Yeah. And then what we're wanting to do is do a, a three month every three month phone call, and it's just hey, had you on my mind today? You know saw this, saw this over here, you know, trying to connect in some way. We hope you're doing awesome. Is there anything you need from us right now? And not not asking for referrals, but just a phone call to stay in front of them. Yeah. So it's not going to be as, you know, and that might change because we haven't even started that that second year yet. But that's, that's mm -hmm. the goal right now is to have a campaign set up that we're contacting them every three to four months. And our, I can't like, I, and I don't know what lenders do, but a CRM is like the most important thing. If we didn't have a CRM, we could not do this. No. And so any any yeah. agent who doesn't have some type of system that's keeping track of all this, I mean, it keeps track of all those dates. It puts it on my calendar for me. And so that right there, I don't, we couldn't do it. But no. yeah, so that that's our goal for that second year is to do more phone calls and less um, automated one month in, three months in, yeah. six months in. Yeah. And which uh, CRM are you guys using? So we use FirePoint and it's not super common. I don't know if you guys yeah. have ever even heard of it before. I have. Yeah, it, it works. It's very, it's nothing fancy in my opinion. But, but it does everything that you really need. And mm -hmm. there's nothing on it that we are like, man, honestly, the one thing that we can't ever figure out is how to do group chats. Yeah, we can't do group clients. text and in it. it, but gotcha. it does everything yeah. else, and I love it. And yeah. if, I think if agents don't have a CRM, they a are missing out on so much business. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Hello. simpler. Uh, sorry, Zoe. Go ahead. Uh, simpler CRMs are the best ones. Uh, the ones that are yeah, super complex. Yeah. They, they can do a million things, drip campaigns, all this stuff. I get yes. overwhelmed even trying to learn that stuff. I want the super simple, like basic ones that can do the most important stuff. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, I was going to say real quick, you know, when you guys are talking about that, you know, it's, it's cool to hear that you guys are doing certain things. Um, and then I think of what I'm doing, you know, I'm like, OK, yeah, I'm doing that. All right. So <laughs> it's, it's, like, com it's confirming, you know, because yeah. the whole past client thing is, is growing uh, for me as a solid lead yeah. source as well. And you're right. It's just the idea of staying in front of them, you know, and I try to do the whole, you know, once it's past the year, you know, staying in front of them quarterly, some kind of a touch or impression whether it's a social media touch or email or a call or a text, but yeah, but just staying in front of them because 
as much as we would love to think that people would always remember us because we gave them an incredible experience, we're just forgetful. Like we're forgetful as, as, a, as a human race. Like that's just some, one of the things that we have to deal with. And so if we don't stay in front of people, like there's gonna be a problem, you know, uh, potentially getting business. Like there was a, um, uh, a stat, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it was a, a basically, I think the NAR put this out. But I think 90% of people that uh, asked this survey, if you have the opportunity to work with your realtor again, would you? 90% 90 of the people said yes, but the actual percentage of people that do was like 25%. It was this yeah. 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 And it's like the, guy, the things you guys are doing are going to help, you know, bring that stat up for yourself. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. We think about it all the time. And, you know, if we sell somebody and they, they go to work, well, how many agents and how many loan officers are there? I mean, we're a dime a dozen. Yeah. And so, you know, your clients work with someone who knows an agent. Yep. And yeah. so that's where we're trying to get smarter in that and go, okay, how can we be at the top of their mind where they think we're the only agent yeah. in town because yeah. you know, they get so much well, service. And to kind of go back to what Heather said about being innovative and not being afraid to try new things, I'll tell you that all the stuff that we're doing, we are not reinventing the wheel. We are copying and pasting from other successful agents yep. that we have researched and looked at and like, man, how are they doing this? And we find out, oh, they're doing this drip campaign. Like the hey, it's three months, change your air filter. That's from an agent yeah. that had the exact same drip campaign and he was sharing it with us and saying, it works great for me. I'm like, let's try it. And then mm -hmm. sure enough, we implement it and I'm getting an email back from my client. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's been three months. Thanks for, for the reminder. Yeah, and nothing. I didn't even type it. It was just a drip campaign. Well, you know? so, <laughs> nice. Nothing that we're creating. I no. spend a lot of time at night. That's my time to like research. And I just get on these like wild goose chases, like, you know, great campaigns or um, follow up after yeah. and then I, I'm on a YouTube and then I'm on somebody else's page and I just like, okay, let's grab all this stuff and make it where it looks like something that we've done. Yep. So yeah, it's funny how much, how much free content is out there. You just have to like go look for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's crazy. Cause um, you know, I was just reading uh, my Bible reading this morning, I think said in Ecclesiastes or something, but it's basically like everything has been done. Everything has yeah. already been done under the sun. There's nothing yep. new. You basically just go find it, duplicate it, and it's going to work for you too. I love that. Yep. That's yep. A, absolutely the mentality of that. Yeah, yeah. After so, um, the next question I have is about your uh, CRM. Like, how many clients are in your? How many past clients mm -hmm. are in your CRM right now? A lot. There are a lot. Uh, um, a thousand. I would say close to that. So company wide, yes. So we've got. I'm, there well no close oh close yeah so between us i think we have probably close to three or four hundred yeah okay. for, for just us okay. um it's it's a lot okay so uh let's go with 350 all right so that means um you're going to be calling all 350 four times a year then yep mm -hmm. so, so 350 mm -hmm. times four <laughs> <laughs> and then divided by 250 working days mm -hmm. that's six calls a day that's not too bad no and we have a thing here at our office that we have to make like it's just a set standard you're making 65 calls a week you know, oh. to clients yeah so okay. it is something where it doesn't matter what you're calling or who you're calling mm -hmm. um you're calling 65 people and, and we keep track of that we're super high accountability here which I mean, some people love and some people absolutely hate. Um, it works out for us. So it kind of keeps us accountable And that. We, mm -hmm. we did just hire an assistant this year because we started, we realized last year we kind of hit as much. Our I mean, mental threshold. Our really. mental threshold was was here. So our, our um, assistant, Lizzie, which we've never hired anybody. This is our first time to hire someone for us. Um, and that's been interesting, but man, it's been worth the money. And, and when there's been some bumps too, we have, yeah. it's not been perfect, but she also helps with a lot of that because I we can't do that and bring in new business um, with that many. So like those handwritten cards and the anniversaries, that's tasked to her. So we know it's yeah. going to take care of. She's mailing it out. Mm -hmm. So those, those extra reach outs were basically tasked for her to do, which is yeah. an avenue that we just didn't have the mental headspace to take care of on a daily basis. But having the system do that and, you know, we get a couple extra referrals a year out of it, it pays for itself. Yeah. Love it. And do you guys have that assistant make some of those calls for you, or is that something that you guys want to make your agents be the actual ones making the touch on the call? Yes. So 
we do the actual touch to the the person like the client if we're doing that reach out that's us um what we've had her do um is that's been really good is going back to the past people that closed you know last year the year before before we had these systems in place and say hey this is lizzie i work with chris and heather they told me you bought a house with them i'm so excited to get to meet you this is who i am i'm wanting to put your birthdays on our calendar can you fill out this link for me so she's gone back and reintroduced herself to all of those people now like 10% of them actually did the link. And then the next month she reached out again. Hey, it's me. It's Lizzie. You know, just wanted to reach out again, see if we could get your birthdays. And so she's kind of doing more of those, um, like inputting, but the phone calls, as far as, you know, staying in touch with them, we want to be like, that's something we want to do. Got it. Got it. And, and let's transition a little bit about, you know, we're talking a little bit about your team and your assistants and mentioned you got 20 agents. Um, I know there's, potentially agents out there that might be in transition. Um, so just want to give you guys an opportunity to talk about what is the value of what you guys have within your agency? Why would a real estate agent want to work with you guys and, and be under your agency? Yeah. So um, I think the biggest thing with our company is we're, we're really weird and different. And I mean, if you talk to someone who knew us, they would say the exact same yeah. thing. So I can say that. <laughs> Um, we kind of pride ourselves on taking a different approach and I'm sure that doesn't shock you all with some of the things that we do, but, um, we're really, we like to call ourselves an all inclusive brokerage. So, um, I would say, yes, we're, we're here for people who are seasoned, but we are really, um, I feel like attracting a lot of agents who are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. I've got my license. I really don't have a ton of money just to start this new business. And so, you know, we say, Hey, come here, we've got you a desk. We've got you, you know, monitors, a computer, you know, you've got signs, lock boxes, you don't have to pay for that stuff. Come here. We are going to give you an all inclusive startup business for you to sit down, go ahead and get leads in front of you where you're not just calling people in your phone. And so we try to make it you know, it's stressful. It's super stressful when you get started and you don't know where to start. You know, your mm -hmm. friends don't trust you because you're brand new. You know, they trust the other person who that they know that's their friend who's been in business. And so that's one thing that I think is really neat is that it truly is all inclusive. Um, the other part though, that trumps everything in my opinion is we, when, you know, when we say we're a team, our, our team is just something special. It feels like a family. It feels like when you walk into our door, it doesn't feel like you're at a real estate office. Like we have people who, you know, will call us and go, Oh my gosh, we heard your daughter's sick. We're praying for her. We're doing, you know, what can we do? Let me show your clients. There are times that agents on our team, will go show clients for us or go sit at our inspection for nothing just because they're there to help. And we do the same yeah, thing. It's reciprocated yeah, like it goes back and forth. And so that is one thing that I, you know, I can't put a value on that mm -hmm. is having a team that actually is there for you when you need them versus, I mean, as far as in business and just in your life, because mm -hmm. life happens, that would be the two things that I think are really cool about our team. Yeah, I, I would kind of stretch a little bit on like the culture. Um, again, we are like a family based uh, company, but our culture, it's it's so different. It's it's not fun. it is. It's extremely fun. We have meetings Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like that's our requirement to be like on the team beyond like making phone calls and stuff. But what's great about that is we get there and we've got a lot of seasoned agents that are really good. They, they sell a lot of real estate. And then we have people that come in that are brand new. The greatest thing is you've got those seasoned agents that aren't like sharking for leads. Mm -hmm. They see someone that's struggling with the lead. They want to go in and nurture them and cultivate them to make them very strong, successful agents. Everyone is each other's cheerleader. Um, we like have like a, a weird, like, competitiveness yeah. you know, because we're <laughs> husband and wife you know but there's agents in there that um you know they they'll close three and the past week and everyone is like hey, that's amazing like yeah. so so happy for you no one no one has like a, a, a jealous threat about it they're truly here to make sure that everyone is successful and empowered to to be a, the best agent they can it's like a pep rally it, our meetings are pep rally and <laughs> i've been around enough uh realtors in this market and hearing from others that you hear horror stories, there's people just being kind of snaky about things. And we don't want to ever be part of that or associated with it. We want people to know that they come here and they can be in a nurturing environment to be as successful as they want to be. We believe in the law of abundance. There's yes. enough business yes. and opportunity for Amen. everyone. So it true. really true. feels that way in our office. It does. That's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Are you guys doing any cold marketing? 
It, how so? Like what type of anyone that's not in, that's not in your uh, uh, sphere? So anyone who doesn't yeah. know who you are, direct mail, yeah. online. We do direct mail. I'll be honest, we haven't had a lot of major success with that, but we've only done it for four months. And so I feel like with direct mail, mm -hmm. it's it's a long term thing before you see it come back. Um, we also have we pay for some lead generation um, on uh, like pay per click. So on a website that's coming in saying, hey, I'm interested in this house, um, things of that nature, too. So we, we do a little bit of that, but not a ton. OK, yeah, it's more so just to make sure you're kind of covering that that base, uh, not because you feel like it works more effectively than what you're already doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. OK, nice. Cool. Uh, got a question here from uh, Aiden. Um, you guys see that on the screen? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Give me a little bit of props as you guys rock. And this question is, what keeps you guys motivated uh, to keep working hard and to do uh, your daily routine that contributes to your success? And we'll kind of wrap up after this. I know you guys got to get going here. But um, if you guys can speak to that question real quick. Yeah. So a big thing for Heather and I, we have nothing else. Real estate is everything. It pays our bills. It pays for vacations. It pays for our daughter's tuition to her school. Like that is the all encompassing. And so we look at it this way. Like there's, there's no like resting on our laurels. Like, Oh, you know, we'll just kind of coach through. We're always constantly looking at, and this is another thing that she can probably expunge on. We break everything down in numbers. We break, we kind of go reverse. Like how much money do I want to make this year? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many clients do I need to close? Okay. How many people do I need to show? How many people do I need to call? How many people do I need to spend time with? And we break it down to how much money per hour do we want to make in real estate, which it's, it's not a salary job, it's commission based. So we break everything down in that sense to set those realistic goals. And then we have that competition kind of going against each other, um, you know, rooting her on, she roots me on, but real estate is a hundred percent what we do. Yeah. The other thing is, um, as far as routine, I am a routine person. Like I, Chris and I are so different. He's like the fun, you know, Oh, let's have fun. And I'm more like structured and facts and things, but, um, I have to get up and get going early in the morning. I'll, I do that whole eat the frog thing. Whatever's on my list that I don't want to do, that is the first thing that I'm going to do. So if I have to tell somebody bad news, if I have to talk about an inspection, if I say you know this or that, that's going to go at the very top of my list as soon as I get to work. I also, I am someone who has to be in the office. I can work from home, um, but I don't love it. So getting up, getting dressed, getting ready, leaving the house, getting to our office mm -hmm. and actually sitting in front of a computer um, is what makes me most um, productive. And then I would say too, we are huge into having a why. So as far as staying, staying motivated and why, you know, we can, why we uh, reach for such success, you know, we kind of, everybody, this is so cheesy, but way back when we used to do network marketing, they were like, you know, you have to have a why. And if your why doesn't make you cry, then is it really real? <laughs> and I know that really cheesy. I get it, I get it, but there's some truth to that. You know, I don't want to just make money. Like, what does money do for me? I mean, it pays bills, it gets us, you know, vacations, but um, there's more, most of the time, if you look at what your why is, it's way deeper than just finances. And so when we really kind of peeled back, like, what, what is our why? It's really our family. Like, number one, our daughter, she's she's got a genetic disease um, and has had um, some major medical issues. She had brain surgery when she was three. She has tumors, you know, on her um, on her body, brain, kidneys, heart. And so, you know, one of the big whys for us is we want, you know, it's a, it is a genetic disease and that she's going to have to deal with that later on in life. And I want to be able to say that we've saved up enough money for her to be able to adopt when she's old enough, or for her to be able to do, you know, different things that might have, have her have a family and things that, you know, those are things that make us scared and make us nervous that finances could possibly help. The other thing is we want to spend time with our family. We don't want to work forever. I, do, I personally do not want to be 60 years old in real estate. Um, I want to be with my parents. I want to be with my siblings. I want to you know, be able to say, hey, I'm taking a month off and, and spending time with family. And so those are our whys that when in real estate, you've got those, you know, high highs and low lows in those low lows. That is really keeps what keeps it. us moving. Going, okay, it's not just to make money and pay bills. There is more to why we're doing this. And I think everybody needs to figure out what their why is. Uh -huh. And it can yeah. be anything. Yeah. So good. So good. I, I hope you don't mind, Heather. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to use that. Your, your why needs to make you cry. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're right. on stage one day and you're saying that, just be like, yeah. hey, I heard it one from the, a, a little realtor in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Give him a shout out for sure. I'll definitely reference it. Definitely. Now, I know we got to let you guys get out of here. You guys have been awesome. Thanks so much for all the nuggets shared. Um, I think if we have any other questions from anybody watching later, they'll just post it and you guys can respond. But really appreciate you guys being with us today. And um, yeah, it's such good information. Um, yeah. And well, we uh, yeah. appreciate you yeah, guys. Absolutely. And you guys are killing it, which is incredible. And so um, I just hats off to you guys. And hopefully uh, we can one day do a deal together. That'd be yeah, fun. For sure. Love for it. Sure. Awesome. Love it. Well, thanks, guys. We'll uh, sign off from here. Everybody out there, take care. God bless. And we'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Take Thank care, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Thanks, Heather. Thank you.